hi guys welcome back to my youtube channel in this video we're going to be looking at savannah regions across the globe and the tropical environments don't forget to like the video as well as share it with anyone who might find it useful i'm going to take a look at the climate that's associated with savannah regions the vegetation that you'd find in the savannah and how the savannah regions are distributed across the globe so i'm going to start off with the distribution savannah regions are found in both the southern hemisphere and the northern hemisphere so unlike our tropical rainforests they are more widely distributed so in the northern hemisphere, examples of places that have savanna climates are Kenya and Sudan. Sudan is found in the northeastern part of Africa and Kenya is found in the eastern part of Africa. And then in the southern hemisphere, we have places such as Zimbabwe, which is found in the southern part of Africa. Moving on to the climatic conditions associated with the savannah regions. Because savannah regions are so widely spread out, so they are found in both the south and the northern hemisphere, places in the southern hemisphere don't experience the same thing as places in the north at the same time. The ITCZ is an area of high temperatures and low pressure, and it basically lags behind the sun so where the sun is going the itcz follows so at the beginning and towards the end of the year the itcz is found more in the southern hemisphere and this explains why mean air temperatures are very high in the beginning and at the end of the year in the southern hemisphere because the ITCZ is found in the southern hemisphere during the beginning and towards the end of the year, it means automatically the northern hemisphere is experiencing colder temperatures. However, in the middle of the year, tables tend to turn where between the months of April and September, again, the sun is followed by the ITCZ so the sun gravitates more towards the northern hemisphere and therefore the ITCZ is found more in the northern hemisphere so temperatures in savanna regions in the northern hemisphere are higher than those in the south this basically explains why in the southern hemisphere the highest temperatures are experienced during the month of October because this is when the sun is at its closest to the southern hemisphere but because the sun moves to the northern hemisphere and the ITCZ follows in the southern hemisphere the months of June and July tend to be the coldest. Three quarters of the annual rainfall falls during the summer. So in the southern hemisphere, you have three quarters of rainfall being received between September and March. And then the opposite for the northern hemisphere, where most of the rainfall is received in the middle of the year. So between April and September. Very little rainfall is received during the winter, which is basically between September and March in the Northern Hemisphere and between April and September in the Southern Hemisphere. And this is because falling temperatures basically invite subtropical anticyclones to occupy the continental masses of the Southern Hemisphere and the Northern Hemisphere. And high pressure belts tend to suppress cloud formation and in turn this means very little rainfall is received. Moving on to the vegetation found in savanna regions. Trees in the savanna region tend to be deciduous. Basically, this means that they shed off their leaves during the dry season. And this helps in reducing the amount of water that they lose by transpiration when the precipitation levels aren't as high. 
Most of the tree trunks also have a thick layer of dead tissue, which basically protects the trees from excessive damage in cases where there's fire. Because savanna regions experience dry seasons, fires tend to be very common. So the trees try to find a way to reduce damage as much as possible. The tree trunks also tend to be very thick, so up to 10 meters in diameter. And this basically enables the trees to store water. The tree leaves also tend to be very small, have sunken stomata and their small hairs on the leaf surface. And basically these are mechanisms to reduce water loss by transpiration. The trees can either have tap roots or lateral roots. Tap roots are useful in cases where there's need to stretch all the way to the water table in order for them to have access to water. And then lateral roots are useful in absorbing as much water that's infiltrating towards the surface. This brings us to the end of the video. I hope you managed to pick up on one or two things and I hope you found this video useful. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe.